My name is Mihya. I use pronouns like he, they, and we. Beautiful. So, how would you define your gender, and what experiences brought you there? <sighs> yeah, that's a really good question. Um, <laughs> I think I would define my gender very broadly as fag. I always say the F on my ID stands for fag. Um, and I mean that in a really endearing and sort of like reclaiming way, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> I was actually outed at a very young age. I was like 12 and went to an all girls school um, and then was outed swiftly. So then I think my queerness um, became immediately evident because I didn't really have that transition time to figure out gender, sexuality, etc., etc. So I think my queerness itself is what's most central to my idea of gender. Um, <laughs> and what actually brought me to where I am today is a lot of love, a lot of patience, excuse me, and uh, an older brother who is also trans <laughs> and Lovely. gave me a lot of language, um, which I really couldn't have been here without. Um, as I mentioned, I went to an all-girls school. He did as well. Um, there's a lot of people who are not girls who went there. But <laughs> I remember one night, um, he had already gone off to college. He's a couple years older than me. Um, and at this point, I was already teaching classes on gender, sex, sexuality, LGBTQ plus issues. So he says to me one night, both of our parents are out of the house, leans over to me and says, Dad's going to be back in five minutes with the pizza. Here's the thing. I'm a man, I think. <laughs> and I said, okay. And he's like, that's it? We're good? And I was like, yeah. I mean, I don't know what else to say. And he was like, all right, great. Don't tell anyone. I love you very much. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and that was my introduction to the concept of like, oh, I too could be trans. <laughs> How lovely. Yeah, so I think that that brought me a lot further. And then a couple years later, I was just kind of sitting there one day and I was like, I don't know if femininity is, femininity is like really working for me. I don't know if this girlness is the kind of femininity that I want to project. Um, and then a couple months later, I was like, oh, I don't have to. I know people who don't, and they're okay. Um, and then since there, it's just been one long, fabulous journey. Lovely. So how would you define gender in general? Oh my gosh, okay, I've been waiting for this one. So um, I'm going to get a little historian here. We're going to take it all the way back. So gender as we know it is actually a very new concept. A lot of it has to do with colonialism. A lot of it has to do with white supremacy. This idea of two genders, although it has existed in different places in different times, the way that it's enforced right now has a lot to do with white supremacy. In fact, gender and race are so inextricably linked, we can't even talk about them in two different ways. Shout out to Gail Biederman. But um, definitely gender itself, uh, a lot of people describe it as a relation between the body and society at large, but in a sort of decolonized sense, a lot of other folks will call it something closer to the experience of being and what that means in the context of spirituality. So I think that has a lot to do with my own gender as well. <laughs> um, I'm someone who is Jewish. I'm also Japanese American. So I think I have a lot of interactions with different cultural touch points and spiritual touch points through that. And I think the idea of the cultural uh, context actually really building out what the individual is, is a much closer definition of gender than being like, oh, it's a guy or a girl. <laughs> um, so I think in the efforts to, to be reductive and make it easy to understand, white supremacy has really diluted what gender is to the point I'm not really sure I could tell you or that anyone could tell you. Um, but how it does, that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> Lovely. And what makes you feel euphoric about your Okay, so um, there's, there's like good euphoria and also I recognize probably unhealthy euphoria. Good euphoria is like when I'm with my gays in the days and we're having a lovely time, we're in the cute outfits, we're having fun. That is gender euphoric to me, being in that community. Um, being with the boys, this is a kind of an unhealthy one, but I love, love, love when I'm like with a bunch of like cishet men, which happens too often for my comfort. Um, and then they make the extra effort so that, like, I'm one of the boys, but I'm dressed like this. So it's like a little bit of homophobia, a little bit of like masculine affirmation. Um, <laughs> it's kind of fun. I think it's, 
I think it's uh, inviting that they are able to see so much of me while understanding none of it. Um, and I think that's a very honest way to perceive me. Lovely. And what would you tell somebody who's thinking about their gender for the first time? It's probably not your first time. <laughs> I think a lot of people live with gender being invisible to them for a long while. But in retrospect, almost always, it's a conversation that you've had since you were fresh out of the womb for many. Um, and you've been thinking about it. So trust yourself. If you're being really focused on it right now, I think you know. And that's good. Perfect. And lastly, the big one. If you could look right here <laughs> um, and say to the trans youth of the world one sentence, what would it be? Mm, so many youths. Um, don't rush it. That's all. <laughs>